Dutchman Industries would like to take this opportunity to thank you for purchasing one of the finest iron workers on the market today. The purpose of this video is to help you become acquainted with the general setup and operation of this equipment. In all moving machinery, there is the possibility of operator injury. It is our goal to keep this potential to an absolute minimum. It is Scotchman Industries' sincerest wish that management would make this video mandatory viewing. In these times of constant changes in the workforce, you cannot be too careful. At Scotchman Industries, we are not only concerned with sales, we are concerned with operator safety and satisfaction. Please consider this video as additional instruction and not a replacement for the operator's manual. Please read the operator's manual. This video covers the basic operation and safety procedures for our Scotchman DO 8514-20M with 85 tons of punching power, a 14-inch throat depth, and a 20-inch bar shear length. Before operating the machine, please take note of the following important safety points. Any individual operating this piece of equipment must be qualified, responsible, and well instructed. The operator must be aware of the capacities of the machine and of the proper use of the hold downs, strippers, and guards provided with the machine. All guards and awareness barriers provided with the machine must be kept in their proper places. Safety glasses are required at all times, whether operating, setting up, or observing these machines in operation. Never place any part of your body under or in any of the machine's moving parts. Strictly comply with all warning labels and decals on the machine. Never remove any of the labels and replace worn or damaged labels promptly. Always disconnect and lock out the power when performing maintenance work or setting up any tooling on the machine. Follow the procedures outlined in the operator's manual for setting up, changing, or aligning any tooling on this machine. The upper control box contains the rest of the operating controls. To start the machine, place the disconnect switch in the on position and both selector switches in the start position. Pull out the stop switch and depress the green start button. Neither station of the machine will function until you designate the position you want to activate with these switches. With this switch, you select the punch position. This station is also equipped with a jog control. To use this feature, place this switch in the jog position and use these switches to jog the machine either up or down. To use the foot pedal for this station, place this switch in the punch position. This switch selects the shear and notching position. This switch is also used to select the probe position if your machine is equipped with the optional electric back gauge. This mushroom stop switch is designed as an emergency stop switch. Punch and die setup procedures. The first and most important procedure we will demonstrate is the Scotchman method of changing and aligning punches and dies. Failure to properly align punches and dies can cause serious bodily injury to personnel and or damage the equipment. Please observe the procedure very closely and use the Scotchman method. Always wear safety glasses when operating or observing this machine. Never operate this machine with dull or damaged tooling. Replace worn punches, dies, and blades promptly. The area around the machine must be kept clear and well lit. Never modify this machine in any way without the written permission of the manufacturer. Never leave this machine running unattended. Always be aware of what the operator of the other station is doing at all times. All electric work should be done by a qualified electrician. Set up a program of regular maintenance in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions. Scotchman Industries has provided the latest state-of-the-art in control panels for their iron workers. In order to operate this piece of equipment, you should first familiarize yourself with the control panels. In the lower control panel, 
is the lockout tagout switch. When the switch is in the off position, you can put your lockout device in the specifically designed switch that prevents turning the machine on. When this switch is locked out, both ends of the machine are inoperable. With the machine's punch selector switch in the punch position and the RAM retracted, turn the power off at the disconnect switch. Release the stripper and swing it to the side out of the way of the punch RAM and retaining nut. Remove the punch retaining nut and set the punch retaining nut and punch aside. Loosen the die holder bolts. Loosen the two set screws holding the die insert in the die holder. Remove the die insert. Loosen the bolt holding the die and remove the die. Place the disconnect switch in the on position and the selector switches in the start position. Power the machine by pressing the green start button. Place the selector switch in the jog position and jog the RAM all the way to the down position. Turn the machine's power off. Clean the die insert cavity of any foreign material. Select the proper punch and die Make sure there is proper clearance between the punch and die. For example, a 1-inch punch must be mated with a 1 and 1 32nd inch die. You will notice that the hole in the bottom of the die is larger than the hole in the top. This is for slug relief. Make sure you install the die with the larger side down in the die insert. Clean both the punch and die of any foreign material. Insert the proper die in the die insert. If the die has a flat spot on the edge, align the flat spot on the die with the bolt in the die insert. Tighten the bolt firmly with a wrench. Please note, all of our shaped punches, including squares, ovals, hexagon, and special order punches, are manufactured with a keyed alignment system. This keyed slot mates with the slots in the punch ram to allow for two different positive lock positions of the punch. We strongly urge you to take advantage of this feature. Insert the punch into the punch retaining nut. Make sure it seats properly. Place the punch retaining nut assembly on the die insert with the punch inserted in the die. Place the insert back into the die holder and tighten the set screws. Raise the punch retaining nut and turn it on to the punch ram. The die holder may have to be moved slightly to align the punch retaining nut to the punch ram. If you are using keyed punches, manually rotate the punch until the key seats in the ram before tightening the punch retaining nut. Use a wrench to tighten the punch retaining nut. Make sure there is equal clearance on all sides of the punch in the die. Retighten the bolts in the die holder. Check to be sure of proper alignment, realign if necessary. Return the stripper to the forward position. Place the disconnect switch in the on position and the selector switches in the start position. Power the machine by pushing the green start button. Place this selector switch in the jog position. Jog the machine several times with the jog buttons without letting the punch come out of the die to be sure the alignment is correct. Place the selector switch in the punch position. Oil the punch and die before use and every five to 10 holes thereafter. After the initial setup, the punch and die alignment should be checked intermittently during the punching operations. To do this, Bring the punch down so it enters the die. Turn off the machine. Check and tighten the punch retaining nut, the bolt holding the die, the two set screws holding the die insert, and the two bolts securing the die holder. Check for equal clearance around the punch in the die. Place the selector switches in the start position and power the machine. Place the selector switch in the jog position and jog the machine several times with the jog buttons 
to be sure of proper alignment. Place the selector switch in the punch position and continue on with your work. Before we conclude our segment on punching, there are a couple more precautions. Never punch material thicker than the diameter of the punch. As an example, a one quarter inch punch will not have enough strength to punch one inch thick steel. Any effort to attempt this can cause punch breakage and possible harm to the operator. Never punch partial holes. The side thrust encountered in punching a partial hole can force the punch over against the die and result in punch and die breakage. This may result in serious bodily injury. Now that you have the proper instructions for installing punches and dies, you must be sure that you have the proper stripping capabilities. Both sides of the stripper must be in equal contact with the material being punched to be effective. If this doesn't happen, the tonnage of the machine will retract the punch, causing the material to tilt, and the result will be breakage or damage to the punch and possible injury to the operator. Remember, these machines have the same tonnage for stripping as they have for punching. For ease, speed, and safety in the stripping function, a 1 8 inch space between the stripper and the material to be punched is recommended. For punching holes close to the edge of material, a stripper plate is shipped with the machine. Stroke controls. The use of stroke controls can greatly increase efficiency and tool life. There are stroke control adjustments for each of the machine's operating stations. The upstroke adjustment will prevent excess travel before the next cycle. For many of the optional tools available for these machines, setting the downstroke of the machine is necessary to prevent damage to the tool. For additional safety and tool life, use the stroke controls. Angle shear. Lubrication is very important. We recommend lubricating blades every five to 10 cuts. Flat bar shear. When using the flat bar shear on your Scotchman iron worker, always use the hold down device. Never put any part of your body between the hold down and the material to be sheared. Do not attempt to insert any material into the flat bar shear in any manner than under the hold down device. The maximum tonnage available is to the left or closest to the pivot point. When using lighter material, move to the right for better quality on the cutoff piece. Do not attempt to shear pieces that are less than three and a half inches long as they are too short for the hold down to grip and this will cause the material to kick up. The result will be a poor quality cut and possible damage to the machine. Please lubricate every five to 10 cuts. Rectangle Notcher. This tool is operated when the machine is in the notch position. When this position is not in use, be sure the guard is in the closed position to prevent anyone from storing tools or material on the table or in the blade cavity. When using this tool, you must set the machine's stroke. The stroke must be set so the heel of the top blade remains in the lower blades at all times. Additional precautions for this station are as follows. With the material between the blades, cycle the machine until the blades have sheared completely through the piece. Continue to hold your foot on the pedal while you remove the material toward you on a horizontal plane. Now that the material is away from the blades, the operator can move his foot from the pedal and the machine will return to a neutral position ready for the next cut. Lubricate the blades every five to 10 cuts. As you can see, there are a great number of optional tools available for this machine. If your machine came with any of these tools, or if you order optional tools in the future, please refer to the operator's manual and the instructions that came with the tool. In summary, it is virtually impossible to cover all the applications when you combine machinery and man, especially when you have the ability to use the power source of this machine for tooling other than Scotchman built tooling. Good common sense and respect for the tonnage these machines develop is very important. 
With proper lubrication and maintenance, your Scotchman iron worker should produce many safe, trouble-free hours of operation. If you have any questions regarding the operation of this machine, don't take any risks. Call your local dealer or Scotchman Industries and we will be happy to assist you. This video belongs to your company or person that purchased the machine. Please use it as a ready reference periodically for continued safe operation or as a training video for new employees. Please consider this video an additional visual instruction and not a replacement for the manual. Please read the operator's manual. If this video or manual becomes inoperable or misplaced, please call the factory at 1-800-843-8844, toll free, and we will send you a replacement at no charge. Thank you for taking the time to view this video.